Hey guys, my name is Amr. I'm here with 44 Football. Um, before I get started with this video, I do want to say uh, like and subscribe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel on 44 uh, Fantasy Football. And today's video, we're going to talk about four breakout players. These four breakout players are going to be some of my favorite players to draft in Fantasy Football drafts. Only because the upside is there. Um, they really haven't broken out that much. And they're still very affordable in Fantasy Football drafts. I'm going to be talking about one quarterback, one running back, one wide receiver, and one tight end. So let's get started. Today, my four breakout players, I'm going to start with Trey Lance. I'm a very big Trey Lance fan. Um, only because I'm, I'm very big on in on his rushing abilities and his coach, which is Kyle Shanahan. So one of my favorite players to draft is none other than Trey Lance. After the 2021 NFL draft for the 49ers, traded three first round picks to trade up from the 12th overall pick to the third overall pick to have the right to select Trey Lance and send a shockwave throughout the NFL. Fast forward one year later, and it's officially the Trey Lance show in the Bay Area. One of my favorite stats last year, from last year is that the rookie on a small sample size, very small sample size, of course, so we can't take much from it, is on 86 dropbacks per pro football focus. Trey Lance averaged 0 0.80 on fancy points per dropback. The highest in the NFL last year, only Taysom Hill had a higher fantasy points per dropback. Only Lamar Jackson and Taysom Hill have posted a higher fantasy points per dropback um, in the last few years than Trey Lance did last year. Another reason why I'm very in on Trey Lance this year is his head coach, Kyle Shanahan. I mean, we've known, we know Kyle Shanahan's background. Eventually, any quarterback that uh, is coached by Kyle Shanahan, he has a very fancy quarterback friendly season. Um, and, his, and of course, with Kyle Shanahan, he hasn't ranked overall offensively worse than 16th overall. Since 2015, he's ranked 7th, 2nd, 12th, 16th, 4th, 15th, and 7th overall. I mean, there's a lot of offense there. and I mean, there's going to be a lot of offense, a lot of yards gained. You want the quarterback, which is Trey Lynch. Last year, when Trey Lance had 30 or more offensive snaps, he racked up 31 carries total. And if we prorate that, which I know is a very dangerous game, for an entire season, we'd be looking at almost 170 carries. But let's be conservative. Just give him 130 carries. So Ian Harris, um, one of my favorite analysts on PFF, actually came up with a stat. Historically, if we look at quarterbacks who had 125 more carries in a single season, all of them finished as a top 12 quarterback. The only exception was Cam Newton in 2017. Another stat I came up with so when I was researching Trey Lance is Lamar Jackson last year was the only other quarterback who had more rush attempts per game than Trey Lance. The other two QBs have nine or more rush attempts per game last year. Both finished as a top 10 fantasy quarterback last year, and those are Jalen Hurts and Lamar Jackson. They both averaged about 20 fantasy points per game. We should be buying Lance everywhere as our quarterback breakout for 2022. A betting angle we can also look at is um, Trey Lance. The 49ers are favored in 13 of their 17 games in 2022. We're going to have a lot of favorable game scripts, a lot of uh, easy defenses to play against, and they also have the ninth highest total implied points for 2022. That's why I'm very in on Trey Lance, and you should be too. Let's move on to our running back. This running back, I'm, I'm very high on. I like, I love him a lot, and he's a Patriots player. I know you. Th I know you know who it is. Ramon J. Stevenson. I know, I know. He's a Patriots player. You can't trust him. You can't trust Patriots running backs. It's a committee. Yada yada. But we could go on talking about why we shouldn't be talking Patriots running backs. But I want to tell you why you should be talking to Ramondre Stevenson and why he'll break out in 2022. The drumbeat out of the Patriots camp has been the same all offseason. Stevenson has earned a larger role, especially with James White um, since he injured his hip and he officially retired about a couple weeks ago. If Stevenson can earn that third down role, that would be huge for his fantasy value. Stevenson ha has also earned a larger role per Bell, Bill Belichick, who's a football bro, and Bill Belichick doesn't give out compliments. So the fact that he's complimenting him during the offseason is something that we should take we heated and something we should notice. Bill Belichick has noticed that Stevenson has worked on his pass pro, and I mean Bill Belichick is a football bro. If you're working on your pass pro and you're not getting the Q QB injured or the QB getting decked by off defensive players, you're going to stay in the game. And we want Stevenson to stay in the game. So as I said, he's also given the James White role according to a lot of beat reporters. And if you can fully embrace that role, while splitting first and second down with Damian Harris, it's takeoff season for Ramondre Stevenson. In 2021, these are a bunch of advanced stats that Stevenson had, which I found very, very valuable. According 
to next gen stats. He had the 11th most rushing yards over expectation, the ninth most rushing yards over expectation per attempt. He had the 11th highest rushing green according to PFF in all of 2021. Another stat that we should look at in Stevenson's favor is among among running backs last year, he had the sixth highest rusher explosive rush rate, minimum 100 plays. I mean, Stevenson's an explosive player, and we want explosive player we want explosive players as our running backs. Another stat, which I found very interesting. In the five games last year that Stevenson had 12 or more touches, he averaged 15 fantasy points per game. That would have been good for the ninth most fantasy points per game among all running backs in 2021 last year, just below Najee Harris and above Elijah Mitchell. Those guys are going consistently in the first and, in first and third round in fantasy football drafts right now. On top of that, it's a very small sample size, which I understand. But during the playoff games last year against the Bills, the Patriots, um, Stevenson had four targets, caught all four of them, which shows that he, he's capable of catching the ball and he can't play that third down role. Let's move on to my wide receiver breakout. This breakout is one of my favorites. I think I think he's going to break out big time this year. I know a lot of people are too. But before I get on to why I think he's going to break out, just listen to this stat. Matt Ryan, his wide receiver one since 2008. Roddy White, 148 targets. 2009, Roddy White, 165 targets. Roddy White in 2010, 179 targets. In 2011, 180 targets for Roddy White. In 2012, 142 targets for Roddy White. In 2013, 132 targets for Harry Douglas. The reason why I just ran down, ran that down for you guys is because I want to show you that Matt Ryan targets his wide receiver one exclusively. Like, his wide receiver one gets pepper with targets, and we want that. And Michael Pym is going to get pepper with targets in this year with Indianapolis. Michael Pittman looks like the next prototypical X wide receiver to play for Matt Ryan. He stands six foot four, large body frame, and he weighs 223 pounds. Pittman has a lot of people excited for his 2020 season, 2022 season, and rightfully so. A year after recording 129 targets, 88 receptions, 1,082 yards, and six touchdowns, he also handled a massive 25.7% target share, and also from weeks 13 to 18 last year handled a whopping 31% target share. On top of all that, he's got a massive quarterback upgrade going from Carson Wentz to Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan, as I said earlier, has done a tremendous job of peppering his wide receiver with, one with targets. Those numbers, he averaged almost 155 targets to his wide receiver one since 2008. 155 targets. Last year, Cooper Cup got almost 180 targets. Just think about that. His lowest targets actually was the Kyle Pitts last year, 110. But I mean, we can excuse Atlanta last year because they were a team that was going through a lot, and it was going through a lot that was like not a lot of teams would succeed in the Atlanta situation last year. But his highest target total was Julio Jones in 2015, with a whopping 203 targets. If we got 200 targets from Michael Pittman, the sky's the limit. A friend of four for Matt Harmon actually. He's very much in on Pittman in 2022 as well. According to reception perception, Pittman was a star when it came to man press coverage ranking in the 96th percentile, which is up there with guys like Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams, A.J. Brown, and those wide receivers are considered among the best. In 2022, it's Pittman season, people. My last breakout player is Kyle Pitts. I know, I know. Everyone loves Kyle Pitts. He's going right now as, as a third tight end, but I still think a lot of people are sleeping on him because like, in his range of outcomes, we're looking at tight end one overall season because Travis Kelsey getting up there in age. We can't trust Darren Waller. He's got the hamstring injury right now in camp. He hasn't, he hasn't practiced much at all during camp. And then we got George Kittle, um, which I'm very in on George Kittle with Trey Lance, as I had alluded to earlier. So those are, the, those are really the top three dogs that are fighting with Kyle Pitts. And I think Kyle Pitts has the ability to take over all those players. Since 2017, Players to gain two yards per route run as a rookie in the NFL with 50 or more targets were the following. In 2017, Juju, Cup, and Godwin. In 2018, no one qualified. In 2019, it was A.J. Brown, Terry McLaurin, and Debo. In 2020, Justin Jefferson and Chase Claypool. 2021, Jamar Chase, Kadarius Tony, and last but not least, Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts is the only tight end in that group. Imagine how good this man is. Last year in 2021 was the third time since 1992 that we saw a tight end command more than 100 targets. The other two were Jeremy Shockey and Evan Ingram. I know, 
before we start making Evan Ingram, Kyle Pitts comparisons, let's slow down. Kyle Pitts was far more efficient running the running routes and catching the ball than Evan Ingram was. According to the rookie year, Kyle Pitts had 2.06 yards per route run. Evan Ingram was 1.45. He also had a high yards per target share, which shows that he was attacking the, the ball downfield. It wasn't just short screens and, and little dump offs. Kyle Pitts had, had yards per target at 9.3. Evan Ingram, 6.3. Kyle Pitts is truly a unicorn among boys, and we should treat him as such. But Kyle's pitch situation has changed just a bit. Another interesting point from Kyle Pitts' 2020 season, 2021 season, is that of all players who had 100 or more targets, only two players had one touchdown or less. One touchdown. Those players were Kyle Pitts and Cole Beasley. Just like try to process that. He had one touchdown on 110 targets. For a guy who stands six foot six and has a wingspan of almost seven feet, it's almost unheard of. And he'll surely positive, positively regress to having more than one touchdown in 2022. I mean, he won't have Matt Ryan under the helm, but he will have a combination of Marcus Mariota and Desmond Ritter. And Drake London will be on the other side to, to help command some attention away from Kyle Pitts. But other Smith, who coached Mariota in Tennessee, can help scheme up a lot of looks, and it's Kyle Pitts season. Everyone should be excited for Kyle Pitts. As I said, these are my four breakout players. And don't forget, to subscribe to 44 Football on YouTube, and hopefully you like and subscribe to this channel, and have a good day, guys.